Magalie Colum and Christopher, and I'm the Artistic Director of Conch Shell Productions. I'm in Queens, New York, and I'm in the land of the Mattencock people. My name is Donna Blanchard, and I am the Managing Director of Kumu Kohua Theater in Honolulu. I am in the land of the Kanaka Maoli in the Kahalu'u Aupua. I'm originally from the land of the Potawatomi in Northwest Indiana. And we would like to welcome you to this week's opening presentation of Reset Theater Coalition's second annual Reset Series 2021, brought to you by Conchal Productions and Kumukaua Theater. We're bringing you new plays, not just bringing you new plays, but we are bridging six hours of a time difference. Not one, not three, six hours of a time difference ESC versus HST, and producing a selection of new plays written by writers spanning two oceans. Now, Reset Series 2021 will feature a total of nine short new plays written by Caribbean American writers, as well as as well as AANHPI writers, that is Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander. These plays explore the courage and strength of women when faced with challenges. We would like to honor women who we feel are courageous and strong. Before we begin, Magali. Okay, so I love that Donna, that you said, let's let's highlight some amazing women who have been courageous and strong. And for me, I couldn't come up with two names only. I came up with like this long list of names. And honestly, what resonates for me is the courage and strength of women who leave their motherland alone and come to America to start a new life. That is amazingly courageous. And I want to honor every single woman who's done that throughout the history of this country, but specifically during this period and women coming from the Caribbean. Because at Conchal Productions, we honor the voices of Caribbean American and Caribbean diaspora writers. I thank you all for making that choice and making a contribution to this country. I would like to talk about a woman who is known as the first lady of physics and sometimes the Chinese Marie Curie, Dr. Xian Xiong Wu. She made a name for herself as one of history's most renowned physicists. She was born in China in 1912. She received a PhD from the University of California, Berkeley. And wow. then after, right, this, I, I, there's more after teaching. And this was not a time when women were encouraged to study physics. After teaching yeah. physics for a couple of years at Princeton University and Smith College, she joined the Manhattan Project at Columbia University in New York. After the war, Wu stayed at Columbia and became the foremost authority on beta decay, which is radioactive, uh, radioactive disintegration. Then in 1956, two of Wu's male colleagues asked her to help in testing a theory they came up with that challenged the law of uh, conser conservation of parity during beta decay. Woo, it was her innovative experiments that proved the men's theory. They won the Nobel Prize in physics in 1957. <laughs> she did not, hmm. but she, she persevered. She continued working in her field. She had many more scientific breakthroughs that went unacknowledged and uncredited. I, wow. I, I love her story. And I, I think it's important to recognize the women who went unrecognized 
that alone, but then they kept going anyway. She cared yeah. about what she was doing and the recognition didn't stop her, but it does matter. And I'm happy to be able to talk about her now. <laughs> so thanks for That's this opportunity. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, tonight we'll be presenting some amazing plays. You want to tell them about the plays, Donna? I would really love to. First is The A Word by Hannah E.E. E. Epstein, directed by Anna E.E. E. Epstein at our sister theater in Chicago, Nothing Without a Company. That will be performed by Sharon Pasia and Kristen Misaki. Thank You, written by Phoenicia Farrell, directed by Marissa Joyce Stamps, performed by Muggily Colum and Christopher and Sarah Marable. Inheritance by Kimie Everard, directed by Suyuno Amos, performed by Sam Fukushima and Denise Aiko Chinen. Surge, written by Tanya Perez and directed by uh, Juan Ramirez Jr., performed by Ashley Leon and Michael Leon. And finally, Denial in Okinawa, written by Lee Tonouchi, directed by Sean Joseph Chu and performed by Sean Joseph Chu and Suyuno Amos. That's a lot. But, <laughs> you know, it's going to be. So we want to thank you right now for joining us to experience the gifts of our Reset community. We know these new plays will, like I said before, move you. And we want you to be moved to say yes to contributing to our mission by making a donation. Yeah, I'm going out there, being up front. Let's keep it real. And here's why. Your donations will allow each of our theaters to continue our mission, to provide our artists with what? What is this? A platform, an amazing platform to play essential roles, to tell essential stories at a time when we need artists. We need artists to redefine the we of this nation. Now, following the performance, we invite you all, every while some one of you, don't tune out to join us. You're invited to enjoy and participate in our post-performance discussion where all the artists will be there and you can type in your questions. Our moderator will send the questions to all of us. We will answer your questions live and in the now. So. And the links to oh. donate to us available yeah. so they're available they'll be down there in the chat or over on the side depending what platform you're watching it's important but if you're listening support. with your eyes closed right now the links are conchelproductions.com and kumukua.org yeah. okay so even if your eyes are closed right now let have let that echo <laughs> through your mind conchelproductions.com kumukua.org Donate. All right, we're done. Are we done? Are we done? Uh, on with the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love singing.
Hello, all, and welcome to The A Word. I am your host, Amanda, she, her, they, them. And today, I will be talking about the matriarchy. What is the matriarchy, you ask? Well, according to my Google search, the matriarchy is a system of society or government ruled by a woman or women. The matriarchy is a social system in which women hold the primary power position in roles of political leadership, moral authority, social privilege, and control of property. Now, we don't see that often in our current society or government, not in America, because the patriarchy keeps us down. I moved from Skokie, Illinois, known for basically nothing except that cis white guy who tried to trademark Aloha by sending cease and desist letters to all the poke businesses, telling them they can't use Aloha in their name or the marketing of their businesses. The anyway, Skokie. It's a suburb where the houses look like boxes and all of the boxes look the same. Everyone acts the same, talks the same, and I stood out like Claudia Kishi, a Japanese American in a one Starbucks town. And who were the officials? Men. Who were the ones making the rules? Men. Who? Never mind. You get it. So, Six months ago, I moved from a place where I get asked on the daily, what are you, to Hawaii. Yes, Hawaii, a tropical paradise that makes me sweat through my clothes and makes my Generation Z heart flutter. Because not only does it slap to be Asian, A-A-P-I, A-A-N-H-P-I, BIPOC, and all the other acronyms for not white, but it's celebrated. Culture is celebrated instead of stifled. The people here are open, open to learning and understanding, and they don't try to stuff you in a box of who you should be or what you should do. The people here are accepting of anyone that shows them the utmost respect. You show them respect, they show you respect. And what does any of this have to do with the matriarchy, you ask? Well, Native Hawaiians had a queen who was loved and revered, who ruled the nation with compassion and respect. Queen Liliokalani, the last sovereign. And for those of you who don't know, let me break her story down for you in 30 seconds. Queen Lily Okalani was born in 1838, sat upon the throne in 1891. There was the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom by a bunch of rich white cis business dudes in 1893. The annexation in 1895, they, these waffy ass douchebags, put her on house arrest for eight months before she was forced to abdicate the throne in 1895, officially ending the monarchy in order to save hundreds of lives, the lives of her people and the lives of native Hawaiians. And it's fucking sad. It's heart-wrenching. And the worst part is she and the women who should have followed her on the throne, like Princess Kailani, the, they would have changed the world in many ways, perhaps made it better for women everywhere. They would have enacted policy in which women had the right to make their own choices for their own bodies. That women don't need a man to fulfill their destinies. That women, never mind, you get it. I'm just imagining it now, but I can see it clearly. Who rules the world? Women! And even though I'm not Hawaiian, I swear, since I arrived, I can feel her energy, her power, her mana. And let me tell you, it is heavy. Now, she was a queen. And if you have any connections to Hawaii, I'm sure you've heard all of this before. And if this is your first time learning 
that Hawaii was once a sovereign nation, a kingdom, a queen, then you need to do better. So as I said earlier, I'm part Japanese, third generation. And because of that, my mom doesn't talk about her Japanese heritage often. She never really learned it from her parents who wanted to assimilate into American culture. We are a matriarchal household. My grandmother lives with my mom and dad, and my mom runs everything. And my dad pretty much does everything she tells him to do. I grew up believing that women are the people who get things done. So when researching my family, her story, I learned this. The Japanese were originally a matriarchal society. Yes, a matriarchal society. We had women in political and religious leaders, warriors, leaders of clans, and yes, empresses. Empress who's, who ruled all the way back in 592. You heard that right? Empress Suiko ruled from 592. Empress Genmei from 707 to 715, who appointed her daughter because she thought her daughter would rule better than her son, who was actually next in line. And it goes on. Empress Koken from 749 to 770, who ruled twice. The foundation of Japanese culture is rooted in matriarchy, as is our creation. I want to be a mother someday. I want to bring my children up in a matriarchal household where they can be whoever they want to be without judgment, without yucking anyone's yum. I want our society to have a woman president, to have women in powerful positions in our government. I want women as leaders in every community. That's what I want. I wonder, what do you want? What are your experiences with the matriarchy? Is your heritage a place that celebrated women in powerful positions in their communities? Did you grow up in a matriarchal home? How do you celebrate the feminine within you? As we smash the patriarchy, I must remind you that you don't have to be born a woman to be a woman. So let's return, reinvent, and reimagine the age of the matriarchy. Thank you for tuning in to the A-Wars. Subscribe by pressing the little button in the top right of the screen. So this is who you are. This is my roommate. <laughs> nah, bro. Fucking chewy. Oh, God. Ha. Ah. Ha. A. A word. Ha. Hello, all, and welcome to the A word. I am your host, Amanda, she, her, or they, them. And today we will be talking about the goddess. What is the goddess you ask? Well, according to my Google search, the goddess is a female deity, a woman adored, especially for her beauty, love, sexuality, motherhood, creativity, and fertility. <gasps> so basically your mom. 
<laughs> Bro, I want to be a mom. Girl, no one cares. You throw in a personal story in the last minute to get me to connect, and it's not working. Take the notes. I don't care about you. And I suppose they don't care about me because I don't have hours of blogs for them to know me, like me, build my character. Here's my character. I'm a 20 something hot mess, like all 20 somethings. I am a cis Filipina woman who adores my twin brother. I like to be alone and I'm not a kind person, but I'm smart. I'm realistic and I'm honest. Perhaps you will fall. What the fuck was that? A word. <sighs> we are the goddess, and this is our manifesto. <laughs> Pussy, pussy, pussy manifesto. We believe that all humans are wicked, selfish, disgusting. The way you hurt Mother Earth and Father Sky, the way you tear apart everything around you so you can feel comfortable and safe. You are not safe in our home. You are not to take without propagating the meals you make, the walls you break, the spirits you wake will not rest, cannot rest until the world crumbles with you and the world will be over soon. Though you deny it, though you scream and cry and lie to our eyes, we will always choke the truth out of you. Reanimate your death again and again and again. We will not have it. The your human splaining, no. You will choke with our chariots of fire <sighs> and uh, to burn off our flesh as your hearts you shall expire. You have been scorched by the treatment of your kind who push down for some peace of mind. You have no power in your structure. You have no influence in your fate. Call us the demon. You are the demon. We call us. The Not again.
Sorry. Sorry I'm late. Um, <sighs> hi. Did something happen? I was nervous and tried to get myself together. <laughs> oh, no reason to be nervous, superstar. Okay. <laughs> I am so excited to meet with you. This, I'm just your mentor. This is not a, a job interview. So uh, please relax. Huh? I'm excited to meet you too. And please do not take my tardiness as disrespect. Gina, dear, relax. Huh? Relax. <sighs> <laughs> I'm Marie and it is a pleasure meeting you. And I understand and respect your apology. Hmm? And because I see light years of potential in your eyes, I am going to tell you what all people running on color time need to know. Hmm? Our time is the most valuable thing we have. We never get it back. Now I understand why you're late today, but uh, as you progress and move forward in your career, remember you represent Haitian women. You know, so many of us come here, struggle for work and fall through the cracks by mistake. The more people have a positive image of us, the better. I completely, eh? under I completely understand. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, uh -huh. Ah, okay. I know babysitting pays well, but you should consider maybe working as an assistant in a private practice. Huh? Working in the front desk will teach you the structure and the general workings of the medical field. That's how I got started. Hmm? Thank you. Of course, of course. Tell me about you. Huh? I, your dean sent over some of your information when he connected us. I know you have great grades, a lovely smile, <laughs> no boyfriend, I hope. Oh, no, 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 no. I learned my lesson books mm -hmm. first. Good, good. I was born in Haiti. I was born in Lakai, actually. <laughs> my goodness, I'm from Lakai. I was adopted as a baby, so most people can't really tell I'm Haitian. I know this program is mostly for real Haitians. Oh, oh what do you mean? You are a real Haitian. Well, I was raised by white people. Haitians come in all colors, and you still have Haitian blood. That's true. I guess I just don't feel Haitian. Typical transracial adoptee nonsense. I'm caught in between two worlds, and... Black one didn't want me. Hmm. I've been here for 21 years now and I've changed. I am a different woman completely, but you cannot run from your blood. Okay? You're right. Yes. You're right. My parents fought to make sure I could keep contact with my grandmother and stay in touch with my culture. For years, I would ignore her cards, but Reconnecting with her has been affirming. Mm. I mentioned that I was into medicine and she said that her nieces and daughters all went on to be pharmacists or nurses. That's one of the things that brought me to you. It's in your blood. And she said I should consider being a nurse like my mother. Wow. That is a profound origin story. Your grandmother is very wise. Hmm? Hmm. So, I know, there are, it's wonderful to be a doctor, okay? We have many Haitian doctors now, but nursing, nursing is a feminine power. We don't just walk in a room, talk for 15 minutes and leave the client behind like a, like a piece of meat on a chopping block. We have a profound impact on the day-to-day -day lives of people. Hmm? Hey. There was a woman last year who had an aneurysm, okay? She was about to go in a course and she was making dinner for her church when she fainted. Now the doctor said she was going to die. 
But me, I knew she was going to leave. Why? Because I watched people come and pray for her, come and cry for her. Hmm? I felt the energy change and made space for it. Hmm? I made sure that every person responsible for her spiritually felt hope. Now she was Haitian too. I stayed with her three nights a week. Now there's not, there's a lot we don't get credit for, but her full recovery was credit enough. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. I make less than a doctor, but I make plenty of money. I have time for my family. I spend time with people. Gina, <laughs> I am going to be, uh, how they say, real with you. Eh? Real? Real? Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It is important to me to get smart girls like you under my wing. For transparency, the more girls I get like you, the more likely the college will fund a full-scale mentorship group. I want to build the next generation. I can see you care about people. I can see it. (laughs) You should definitely continue considering nursing, eh? Well, I am. I'm strongly considering it. Good. Good. Um, I never had a daughter of my own, so I take this mentorship seriously, very seriously. I can be a resource for you moving forward. Eh? (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. Do you have any questions for me? eh? Yeah. Um, It's a little strange strange safe place go ahead do you regret leaving Haiti at all you're right that is strange I'm sorry I'm just I'm curious ah you're curious no it's good for the field but you should be careful how you talk to people I'm sorry I'm sorry no I'm not offended I'm not offended I've been there and done worse. (laughs) Once there was a coworker of mine who was crying because she missed her daughter who was in IT. Our supervisor was raging at her one night and I asked my supervisor, I begged her, please understand. I told her that uh, my my coworker was (laughs) feeling the pangs of missing her child. Uh, my supervisor was a mom, so I assumed that she would understand and be kind to my coworker. Mm-mm. Little did I know that my supervisor preferred to hire women who had no children. And my coworker had lied because she was desperate to get work. If I had stayed quiet, but I didn't, and my coworker suffered for it. So, soft place, don't apologize. Is this normal, women leaving their children? Well, yes. Well, what, what, what? It seems evil. Like Medea slicing the heads of her babies. They are good. I know them like the back of my hand. I eat with them every day. Yes. I, I always stories, their stories, their stories keep me awake at night, so please. I always think of the children, but they're both in pain. Yeah, they, there's a guilt that fills them for years, but they know the truth. There's a lot of bad things in the world that have to have happened to a woman for her to feel she has to choose between herself and her child, that she may not have a choice in having a child. I love my people, but um, the things I endured made me leave. When a man can have his way with you and the women in your family ask you what you did, anger will fill you. I'm so sorry for what happened to you. As is life. Hmm? Bad things happen here in America too. Bad things happen to me. But... 
I had choices when they would happen. But that was by design. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, Gina, you have to understand, okay? I had two choices when I wound up pregnant. Drown or make a new start in America. So no, I will never regret coming to America, even if you can't run from your blood and mine runs from the streets of Haiti. Anyway, <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why I'm telling you this. This is frankly unprofessional. I am sorry. Um, I feel comfortable with you, okay? Soft place. <laughs> soft, soft place. Hmm. Marie, I haven't been honest with you. Hmm? My grandmother named me Emmeline. Her name was in need. We were both born in Lakai. I spent the last six months looking for you. I think you're my birth mother. I, I think you have me uh, confused. No, and, no, and, I, I'm and... very aware of what I'm talking about. Do you realize how strange this is? There have been so many times where I wanted to find you and ask you why you left me. And I'm not, I'm not here to attack you. Okay, or demand a, re a relationship. I have a life. I had your name for two months before I reached out. But when I saw you were mentoring girls at my school, I saw it as a sign. A man had his way with me too. And it was hazy and I thought I loved him. Everything just happened so fast. He didn't even consider if I wanted it. He just did it. Maybe that makes you sad, huh? That I'm your flesh and blood and the blood came back and men soiled both our rivers. After it happened, I thought my body left me. Weeks passed and I bled no more. Choices, we all have them. You chose life, but you also left me behind. In any case, I turned out all right. But the world is getting stranger every day and I couldn't guarantee the child would be okay. We're in a pandemic, we're still in a pandemic. I mean, look at how we're talking to each other, it's crazy. But I thought I hated you. I wanted to be a good woman, the type that doesn't leave people behind who makes space. But would it be nice to get me? A closed mouth when he raped me? Well, I cut the blood, terminated the pregnancy, and I thought I hated you. <laughs> but I lived a little. And I can see now why you made the choice you did. I had to learn what it means to, to choose me. And I felt it was so selfish. Hmm? but I can't take care of a baby. So thank you. Once the villain to my story, the selfish mother who abandoned me. But you chose yourself, which in a way is heroic. So really, mom, Thank you for teaching me to choose myself. Are you even interested in nursing? I don't know.
Olivia. We've discussed this. It's not camera. Oh, really? Olivia. I'm here out of protest. What's that? You I'm, seem to have something covering I'm your here face out of here. What? Your oh. voice is all muffled. <gasps> Well, you clearly have something you wanted to share. What with your theatrics? My words never matter, and I couldn't find tape. Well, I have to wear a mask every time I go outside. I will not have my daughter talking to me through one pointlessly, too. Cashiers have to wear them for eight hours straight. You can handle 10 minutes at Safeway. Tone. You've never worn a face mask before last year. Remember, I've been wearing one my entire life. You look puffy. Have you been eating those low sodium chips? You know your face holds too much water when you have salt. How's school? Fine. One call a month. You can't make the slightest effort once a month. It's great. I don't know. Boring. We're having finals. You're studying? Yes. The polite thing is to ask how I've been. How have you been, mom? Tired and overwhelmed with work. Cherish your time in school, sweetheart. You don't know the slightest thing about being stressed. That's struggled. crap. Olivia! What, I'm not allowed to have challenges or pain because I'm young? Because you have everything. I've given you everything and you take it for granted. So no, you don't have challenges, you have inconveniences. And at some point you need to grow up and take responsibility for yourself. I've started seeing a counselor. Good. A little bit late in the semester, but good. He's helping you make your class schedule? No, mom. Like a mental health counselor. You don't need to see a mental health counselor. It's, it's been a hard year. Olivia, it's been a hard year for everyone. You don't see me running to cry at some... I want to kill myself! That's too far. I'm your mother. You can't say things like that to me. Are you joking? Who am I supposed to tell then, mother? I just want this to be a time for us to connect. But you insist on your dramatics every time. I'm trying to tell you something. You're impossible. Mom, I'm not. I'm being serious. I'm not being over dramatic or whining or I'm, I feel like I'm drowning all the time. Like I'm lost in the ocean and I can't breathe and I can't find which way is up. I have no friends and school's not, school's not going well. I'm stressed and I'm terrified and it's heavy on me. Like I can't even lift my own weight out of bed. I used to dream of fire. I would walk around being consumed by the world, my family, school work. And it was like being eaten from the outside in and losing pieces of myself a bit at a time. So I dreamt of fire. It would start at my arms 
my skin blistering red as a sun. I, I could feel the blood boiling underneath, blistering through my skin. And I would turn black, shriveling, crumbling. The fire would start at my arms. The skin at my hips would catch up my arms, up my legs, down my stomach. I, I couldn't move. And all I could do was listen as my body broke apart. The heat so intense, it sucked the air out of my lungs. And, and little by little, it ate at me until only my heart was left. And then that was ash too. You never told me. No. No. I never told anyone. The dream stopped? They stopped because I remembered I had responsibilities, people counting on me. I didn't have the luxury of spending all day laying in bed. I had your grandparents to care for, your father, you. Lord knows you were a difficult child. I'm sorry, I didn't. No, but. I'm, it's okay, sweetheart. I'm not trying to upset you or act out. I just, I needed my mom to tell me I was going to be okay. You'll be okay, baby chan You're my daughter. I made you strong. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have to go. I have to get to the library before it closes. Oh. All right. Bye, sweetheart. Study hard. Bye, mom. I love you. I love you, too. Uh, <clears throat> you shouldn't be in the shower in the storm. What? I said, you shouldn't be in a shower in the storm. What? I, I can't hear you. I said, you should not be in the shower in the middle of the storm. What did you say? I said, you should not be in the shower during a hurricane. It's dangerous. Clearly. Hey, you don't know me anymore. Oh, uh, here know. we go. Great, well then go get an electrocutor. Well, we have a Category 5. I'm not going to get electrocuted.
electrocuted student. That is a man. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Can you please put on your clothes? Why? Are you tempted? Carmen, quit it. I want us to be civil. Look at these tits. Trees are bending. Are you afraid? No, why would I be scared? Because death scares you, it always has. Look, I didn't choose to be stuck in this room with you, but I am, so I really don't want to wait out this one fighting. This isn't fighting. Yes, you were picking a fight, fucking half naked. Hey, whose idea was it to clear out the house Not today? Me. Whose idea, Jake? Was it mine? No, it was you. You wanted to get all Shh, your shit out quiet. today. I really don't want to get into this right now. There are other people here. Well, fuck them. Fuck them all. I, I am so sick of you telling me how to act. I am grieving. God damn it. You know, this fucking sucks. And I have the right to scream my head off. See? Suck my asshole, pendejo. Category six now. <clears throat> Hello? No, we're okay. I am so sorry we will keep it down. The windows? Uh, hon, could you check if the windows are locked? What? Just check them, please. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> they seem secure. Stop it! No, we're fine here. Okay, thank you. So goddamn tired of being the joke, Mr. Carmen Rodriguez, the wife of my wife. The wife of my wife. Oh, give me some fucking credit. I. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I don't know. I see it in the movies all the time. If you were going into some strange emotional loop, just consider it payback for that lame ass slap you tried to give me. You are a difficult woman. <laughs> Is that what happened? I started stepping into my own strength and it suddenly it became too hard. It's for not you. like that. You are really a tough person. 
You have your come to Jesus here? Come on, Carmen. I'm, I'm trying. Okay, well, stop trying. Just stop it. I am all good, really. <laughs> thought we didn't have a flashlight. We don't. But I do. You don't grow up in Florida most of your life not carry one around. Here. I quit. Of course you do. Suit yourself. You shouldn't smoke. Remember when? Do not remember when. Uh, right Carmen, now. can you let me talk? Okay. Remember when we were in undergrad and um, we used to have those hurricane parties and stock up on booze and chips? Yeah. I would be stuck with all your boneheaded friends who had never seen a Latina before. You know, when they got drunk, they got very handsy. Saying stuff like, you don't look like a white girl to me. Do you have tacos for breakfast? I hated those parties. I... Don't apologize for them. You were never like them, so don't. Good luck finding the booze. Jackpot. Uh, you can't trust that. That's probably rubbing alcohol. <laughs> <coughs> Let's go back in time. When we liked each other. Carmen. Not like that. And we were friends once. We still can be. My rules. Hello, I'm Carmen. Is this Miguel's dorm room? Hi. Uh, this is his place. Who are you? Who are you? Remember, I was his girlfriend. Yeah, I remember. I was trying to be cool and mysterious. That was cool and mysterious? Oh my god, I was so dumb back then. <laughs> I was, uh, I had to pretend not to be a nerdy biochemist. It worked. I, I don't want to hear it. Whatever confession of emotions you have, I don't want to hear it. Way to ruin the moment. Ay, Dios mío. So like you to dominate what I can or cannot say. You've got to be kidding me. You should be happy that I haven't burdened your ass for all the bullshit you've done. <laughs> they were right. I knew it. They tried to warn me, but I didn't listen to what them. What are you talking My about? My parents, they said that you were too excitable for... What? Oh, no. 
No, 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 Calm down. I didn't mean anything by it, for Christ's sake. Don't bring Jesus into this. <laughs> oh, the convenience of selective Catholicism. Oh, dear God, if I have truly sinned, please strike me down now. Can you help me? You should have all heard your voice fly. You said you heard you loud and clear. Help. This is how it ends. For richer, for poorer, sickness, and in health, Puerto Rican and Irish, Italian, but whether we like it or not, forever we are bonded. And this, of all places, is the shittiest way to end. Thank you. You can keep the ring. I, it doesn't fit anymore. My fingers are like those trees. Been around so long, they, their roots grew too big for the soil they cling to. Of course the ring still fits. You never change. Still the same size I met you. <laughs> don't believe me? Put it on. I don't want to, Jake. Save all that for your new model. When did we become like everybody else? When you cheated on me. That's when we became like everyone we knew. You're never going to go. You're never going to forgive me, are you? Does your conscience need that validation? Forgiveness? Is that a Puerto Rican thing? To eradicate forgiveness in order to be right? Is she white? What does that have to do with anything? No, it's a yes or no question. Is she white? I'm not going to answer that. Well, you just did. She is a young white girl who looks up to you because you're her professor, her father figure, and it feels good to you. So when she asked you all her nerdy little questions as your assisting TA, you decided to dive into that taboo, curious about what it might feel like to touch her, kiss her, fuck her. So your very demanding, emotionally distant wife was off helping her homeland to cover, recover from the most catastrophic disaster of her people. But it was like the best piece of cake you've ever tasted, wasn't it? Jake? Dear God, forgive me for what I'm about to do. What the fuck, Carmen? If you come anywhere near me, I'm ready. Maple plots are one of the most resilient trees in the storm. Did you know that? They are built to sway in the winds and can almost bend right to the ground. Carmen. We need to protect ourselves. They are native to warm weather climates like this one. They evolved. It was the trees that the northern settlers brought that are the dangerous ones. The trees they brought to remind these people of their homes. Snap out of it, Carmen. The rigid, easily breakable. I get it. You are strong, and I'm sorry for not being a better man. Fuck. Carmen, I am with you. Please, get away from the door. I'm not scared anymore. I can withstand you, withstand this. With my feet rooted firmly in the earth, I bend. It's flooding in here bad.
Emergency services. Do you know who I am? You are American. <laughs> well, gave it away. You mind if I stay here? Do you not have someplace else to be? No place I'd rather be than right here with you, baby. It is quite peaceful here. I prefer to be left alone. So you prefer, but you're not 100% completely sure of that. What are you like? 70% sure, perhaps 9% undecided yet? But even that would mean 20% of you wants me to stay right where I am. <laughs> I am quite sure. I don't believe you. Why is this difficult to believe? I just don't believe you is all. You do not understand my English? On the contrary, your English is pretty impressive. How do you learn? We were taught if we want to get a job on the American base, it is best for us to learn your English. Sound bitter about it, but... Y'all can speak your own language, right? I hear y'all speaking Japanese all the time. That is not my language. My language is Uchi Naguchi. Mm. The Japanese forced us to learn Japanese in school. It is why I do not even know my own language. Well, hardly anyone ever uses your Okinawan anymore, except those like over 100, right? So look on the bright side. English and Japanese are pretty useful, if you ask me. I am not asking you. Please go. You don't really want me to go, right? I do. You don't really want me to go, right? I do. But uh, don't you feel safer with me around? I do not. It's my smoking. It's my smoking, right? Yes, it is your smoking. That is it. Please go somewhere else. <sighs> don't worry. It's just fire. See how I got it under control? You want to see something cool? <laughs> There's no more powerful force in the world than fire. That's why they call it fire power. Why'd you do that for? I prefer water. Water gives us life. We are island people surrounded by water. Water is what connects us. Rather than scaring people away with fire, we can bring people together with water. Therefore, I say water is more, how do you say, powerful. <laughs> what did you do? Oops, spilled some lighter fluid in your precious water. What good is it now? <laughs> don't worry about it. You can always get more water. I don't see what the big deal is. Don't worry, I'll clean it up. When? You are not answering. Hey, you know what? Since you ain't got nothing to drink no more, what do you say we go 
get something to drink or maybe a bite to eat. We, we can go to A&W. What makes you think I care for your American fast food? Too unhealthy, you think? But you ain't got nothing to worry about. Ain't you people supposed to be the world's longest living or something to that effect? Those were our elders who ate traditional Okinawan diets and regularly lived to be 100. Now, many of us die at middle age because our diets have changed so much. Oh. So, do you want to go or not? We can skip the fries if you want. Just leave. You don't want me to go, right? I do. You don't really want me to go, right? I do. But I, 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 I can... I, I can you, you, don't you feel safer with me around? I do not. But I can protect you from your enemies. I do not have enemies. Oh, trust me, you do. Who? They're out there. Are they my enemies or your enemies? They're our enemies. See, we got something in common, baby. Don't worry, you'll be safe with me. Or am I more the target? You don't want me to go, right? I do. You don't really want me to go, right? I do. What if I were to tell you that you need to go? Then I would protest. <laughs> and what if I made you? You know, if I wanted to, I could just take you away right now, pick you up like, like a 12-year-old girl. You know? I am not a 12-year-old girl. Did you bring two accomplices? I hope you did not rent a van because renting a van wouldn't be cost effective according to your leaders. Didn't the military commander of your United States Pacific Command say for the price they paid to rent a car, they could have had a girl? Didn't he say that? Unfortunately, yes. That wasn't very smooth of him. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said 12 year old girl. Bad memories, bad choice of words. Quite. Do I frighten you? Yes, your face is quite frightening. Now, please leave. I wasn't talking about my face. Please leave me alone. Come on, let's do something. I am. What? I am waiting for you to leave. How long are you going to wait? As long as it takes. What do you say we go and get something to drink? Are you thirsty? Here, drink this.
Jen. Hey, 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 welcome. And thank you for sticking around for our little artist chat here. Okay, we're gonna do like, we did a part, we did it, we did it. Woo, 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 woo. We did it, yeah, people, uh -huh. we did it. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> so that was all our audience showing you how excited we were to, to, to have done this amazing opening. And we wanna especially, we're gonna be including everybody in this chit chat, including Santos Colado, who's one of a member of our technical team and Veronica Vera. I am Magali Colleyman Christopher, the producing artistic director of, and founder of Conchal Productions. I said hey to you at the top and I'm saying hey to you now. Passing it on to Donna. I, I'm sorry, I apologize for the <laughs> delay here. I, uh, okay. I was also running the show and I had two streams going. So I uh, <laughs> just flipped myself out there for a moment. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And um, I, I just want to take this time to let you know that if you loved what you saw here and you want to see more plays of writers of color, then please please support our theaters. We're really happy to offer this free of charge to everyone. And this show is going to live on our social media. Um, and if you are able, please donate to our theaters. And you can find us at conchellproductions.com and kumukahua.org. And truly, no amount of your support is too small. We, we will appreciate it and we will put it to good use. Harry, would you like to say something? Yes, and in the mindset, you know, of quality over quantity, let's do a brisk talk back. Uh, and uh, just so you know, my name is Harry Wong III, and I, and I am the artistic director of Kung Fu Hua Theater, and I am, uh, I don't know, broadcasting to you from downtown Honolulu. So on the Kona side of Oahu, in the Ahupua of Nuuanu, where my people have lived for centuries. Yeah. So then let's, uh, let's, um, oh, and then please, if you have any questions, yeah, audience, you can send it to our Facebook or our YouTube, and then we'll make sure that everybody gets to hear your question. And uh, so then part of the reason why it's great to be doing this kind of work, uh, I don't know, digital, online, live productions, is that we get to collaborate with people all over the creation, yeah? <laughs> and then so I'd like everybody to introduce themselves, you know, including the wonderful stage managers that have been working with us. And so then in Ka'olelo Pigeon, English from Hawaii, so go tell your name, yeah? What you wanna do for the show, yeah? And then also, where you stay doing this from, okay? And you know what? I got to ask Magali and Donna for doing because I'm on my phone, yeah? <laughs> so call out, so they're going to call out the names or point out who should go talk. Okay, go go for it, Donna. You, you do the choosing, okay. go for it. I'll just go down the list that I have and let's ask Veronica to speak up. Veronica, our digital goddess. Hi, I'm Veronica Vera. I am the uh, digital engineer for the show. So I made all of the all of this flow together. Um, I am currently in Kailua, Hawaii, which is land of the Kanaka Maui. And I don't know if there's more specific, but that's where I'm at. <laughs> Santos. Hello everyone. I'm the stage manager here, uh, stage managing for Kongsha Productions and for our reset series. Uh, yeah, so I was moving people around, doing some things with light and sound. I also sound designed a couple pieces. I'm uh, zooming in from the Lower East Side and New York City. Aiko. Hi, I'm Aiko. I played Fusami, the mother in Inheritance, and I'm doing this from Waikiki. Uh, oh, Tanya. Hi, I'm Tanya Perez. I'm the playwright of Surge, and I am zooming in from the Boogie Down Bronx. <laughs> Hannah and Anna Rose. They look a little frozen to me. Can you guys unmute? There you go. 
Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm Anna Rose. I directed um, the A Word, the first piece. I am Hannah E. Epstein, and I wrote the A Word. We are coming to you from Chicago, the traditional homelands of the three fires, the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi nations. Awesome. One. Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? I'm Juan Ramirez Jr. I am from the South Boogie. If you can hear, they, I got the fireworks happening outside, so that's true. <laughs> and um, from the Lenape people and um, what used to be called Rancanqua, so um, the Bronx, the Boogie Down. Mwah. Nice. Mwah. Ten. Chris, ten. Hi, I'm Kristen, and I was Amanda in the A Word, and I am in Honolulu, Hawaii. Lee Tonouchi, the pigeon gorilla. How's it? Uh, <laughs> Lee Tonouchi. Uh, normally, I would be calling in from Aia, but today my daughter's got a film on Okinawan music dance video. So we're at Kualoha Regional Park. Uh, I'm the playwright for Denial in Okinawa. Marissa. Hi y'all, I'm Marissa. I was the director for Finesse CFRLs. Thank you. And I am currently in Valley Stream, New York, in Long Island on Muncie, Lenape, and Rockaway Lands. Sam. Hi, I'm Sam Fukushima. I played Olivia in Inheritance, and I'm in Waipahu, Hawaii. Sarah. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Marable and I played Gina in Thank You with the wonderful Magalie. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> who hasn't gone? I don't know. Okay. Hey, Jean. Jean. Cool. Hi everybody, I'm Jeanne. I'm in Florida and I composed a few pieces tonight. A few pieces. Um, yeah. <laughs> Michael and Ashley. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, Ashley Leo. Um, thrilled to be a part of this wonderful community with my real life husband not getting divorced. Um, <laughs> hey, and I'm Michael Leon, and we were both in Surge. So, Paloma. Hi, I'm Paloma Sierra. I'm currently in Puerto Rico, land of the Taino, and I was the dramaturg for Panesia Farrell's Thank You and Tanya Perez's Search. Some and Sharon. Hey guys, I'm Sharon. I was Emily in the A Word with Kristen, and I am coming from Chicago, Illinois. That's and what I tell, uh, That's nice. That's so nice. I mean, uh, I mean, I love the whole Hawaii factor. I, I just feel like getting on an airplane, but well, but loving the fact that you guys are there living it for me. That is awesome. Uh, did we hit on everybody? I think, is there anybody that I missed? Oh, so did Su, you know, and Sean Chu? Oh my God, they're right, right there, right in my face. I'm so sorry. Go for no, it. No, no, no. We, we just did the thing and it's you just, did the thing yeah, and yeah. you're just Hi, part I'm, of our memory. We're, yeah, it's a subtle <laughs> dream, right? Like, <laughs> if, ephemeral. Hi, I'm Sean. I did all the theater things for Denao and Okinawa, written by the great Lee Tonuchi. And we are broadcasting from the sub hipster district of Kaka'ako in Honolulu. Yeah, I'm Sue Yuno. I directed The Inheritance and also acted in Lee Tonuchi's Denial in Okinawa. Multi talented and Sean. Sean is also a playwright, if you didn't realize it. His play was part of Reset Series 2020. So let's give him multi talented, multi faceted artist kudos. All right, so we're going to jump into a question. Hi. You guys ready for a question? Did, did we hit on everybody? Can we jump into the questions? I didn't get to go. I'm Finesse. Finesse, yeah. What? <laughs> so sorry. Ah, ah, ah. Finesse, Thorell, the playwright. Yes. Go for it. I'm Fanesia or Fanesia, and I wrote the play Thank You. And Fanesia's play 0.25 was in Reset Series 2020 last year. So, major, we've got, I mean, there are other people who were part of 2020 uh, Juan Ramirez Jr., Tanya Perez, who else was Sarah Maribel, Hannah, and Anna E. Epstein. So, Mijan King. I mean, we have a lot of comebacks, all right? So, 
all that to say, donate. Did I say donate? Did I come out with the word donate? Coming to the question, the commercial break is so over. Okay, so everybody can answer this. So I'm not gonna call anybody's names. You just jump up in there. What was your favorite and most challenging moment in this entire process? Okay, jump on it. What was your favorite and most challenging moment? Our, our most challenging was, I think, the just scheduling rehearsals. We have one actor in Hawaii and one actor in Chicago. So just being able to make sure that they were also able to connect was pretty intense, but very fun. Awesome. That's a big heart. Did you see that big heart? That was beautiful. Yeah. Anyone else? Most challenging? So it was smooth and easy and it, everything challenges. smooth and easy. It was, oh my God, I love it. What was your favorite thing? Forget, okay, Tanya, Tanya, go for it. I think this is both the challenging and favorite. Can you hear me? Okay, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it was um, figuring out how to create a hurricane in uh, <laughs> Michael and Ashley's space. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot of like, how do we do this? How do we figure it out? And, um, and it, it was, I think for me, it was it was wonderful to see like, how we push the boundaries of, you know, what we can do in this little square box. Pushing boundaries. I love that. That's yeah. like, that's what the most exciting aspect of this online theater journey that we're on that I think is going to be around for a long time because it's pushing our boundaries, you know, in ways that are just like, I mean, forget it. As even the eye line, figuring out your eye line. You're like pushing the boundaries on what an eye line is. It's like, you can't eyeball people on Zoom because then the audience miss. It's just like, what? <laughs> uh, um, I can talk about something that I went through. Our, our wonderful stage manager, Faith, who has been working with all of the Kumukuhua productions and has done so much work, is actually involved in two other productions right now. And she's filling in as, as an actor. Uh, so I stepped in for her to help shuffle people around today and it's a complete I've been involved in theater since the 70s <laughs> and this is the, this is a completely new experience to the 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 engineer and the stage managers are responsible for the blocking it's not the actor's responsibility from walk to walk from one side of the stage to the other necessarily I mean Michael and Ashley you did some of that but for the most part other people are moving you around. It's a completely different world. And if anybody's watching and wondering how Zoom works for something like that, it's all about the chat rooms and just move. So we have a green room, we have a live room, and we have a post show room where people can go and talk after they're done and they go, Phew. and the green room people still get to think about what's coming up for them. And uh, it, it's been a really cool experience. I'm uh, I'm happy for Faith and all the other opportunities. Hey, we got. Donna, I, I pulled Faith out of the theater. Here she is. Faith. <laughs> Faith and thank you so much for. <laughs> Faith. Hi, Faith. Sorry, I yelled. She and um, Santos and Veronica also prepared me really well. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Teamwork makes a dream work. So you're here with us. That's good, Faith. You deserve it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so were there any surprises along the way? Any sudden realizations along the way in this pr production process that made you go, oh, hmm, okay, hmm. That would be kind of different from regular theater. We're talking about regular theater versus this kind of theater, right? Any surprises, uh, even as the writers, that, that, was there any surprises that hit you when you realized, wait a minute, this medium, this medium is asking something different for me or the directors or the writers, this medium. Does Do we have anyone here for whom this was your first digital production? I yeah. think, you know, last year when we did Reset, it was so new for everyone. But yeah. this year, I mean, I know I'm seeing a lot of faces who are kind of getting to be veterans. And we mm. were really on the cutting edge, the vanguard of digital <laughs> theater last year. Oh, yeah. Chris, Chris, this is your sixth. Oh, my gosh, seventh. All right. All right. That's what I'm talking about. This is, this is my first digital theater experience. And it was super less terrifying than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> awesome, awesome. 
I think that, uh, that a lot of that is on Veronica and Santos and Faith figured out last year how to give us the sense of being in a room together and right. having the community rather than just being alone in your corner of your home. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really helpful. What and I love you? how the writers have evolved. I mean, you guys are really pushing boundaries. I love, and, and our directors are finding ways to use space and recognizing that uh, Veronica has the capability to make amazing things happen. We made a hurricane happen. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really great that you mentioned that, Donna, because like, it's true. It's like we have theater, TV, and film, and it acts... What does that ask of the audience, right? How do you bridge that distance, right? In theater, it's like they get to control the perspective, right? They get to look around all they want. If you hear fireworks, that my bad. Um, they get to, they get to, you know. I've always had friends who go to the theater and go, you know, were you watching? Yeah, but I was watching the actor in the back to see if they were really <laughs> drinking that water. So that that's what's fun in theater, right? And then in TV and film, you get to control the camera, right? And then so that was a that was. Zoom or, or virtual performance, it's always like, how do we bridge that distance, right, with the audience and us? And you do, you you put it, everything in a blender, right? Yeah. Whether it, it is effects, green screen, whatever it is, you just put it in a blender and you just got to keep trying stuff and keep trying stuff. And um, just, yeah, that was like my motto. Let's try stuff until it, you know, either works or doesn't. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The, fly, the fly on the wall concept, so does what helped me. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah. So, okay. I'm loving this. Now, you know, this theme for this reset 2020 is women strength and courage, right? How did, that's right. So tell me about the process, either as the writer, the playwright or the, or the actor the process of bringing to life work that was highlighting something that we think is the most amazing thing in the entire world. Um, Share your thoughts. And, and Veronica's like, yeah, that's right. Me too. Yeah. You know what? We, we, so we gave this challenge to our, I'll just start it off by saying we gave this challenge to our writers and then we got your scripts and we set out to read them. And it looks like you all went on a retreat together. That's exactly what we said. It's like, oh my goodness, what? Goddess factor, fire, light. Yeah. Just, yeah, that, that it, quiet it was just beautiful. Power quiet and big power was amazing what was share your thoughts on on how this theme moved you whether you're the writer or how this theme moved you as the actors i mean are you used to getting pieces of work that showcase the power of woman or the director hada and anna rose you should talk a little bit about this because their piece is a piece of a show that we're producing at Kumakuhua in our ah. upcoming season. Yeah, um, the Kasha of Kaimuki is gonna be in Kumukuhua's 51st season. And I was actually working on rewrites when Donna's email came in about the theme of this festival. And I was trying to like figure out how to do some character development. And I was like, what if I just take these two characters from this play I'm working on right now and just like come up with the thing and that's kind of like what unfolded in the A word was the blog and then the poem that came after. And in the process of doing this, I'm like, I'm not putting this particular piece within the main piece, but there are aspects in that poetry and in these parts of the of this shorter piece, the A word, that I'm going to figure out how to incorporate into the larger piece because it's able to explain things about this demon, the Kasha, that I wasn't able to explain prior to this festival. So in workshopping this A word, I'm able to workshop my entire feature length um, piece. And she was a little stuck on it too. So it was, thanks Donna for the email. <laughs> good, I'm glad that helped. It was really good use of a prompt. Yeah. And Paloma, as the dramaturg, I brought you on. It's like, Paloma, I need you. I need you. These are all new works. I need a dramaturg. I need a dramaturg like yesterday. So give me your thoughts on the experience of looking at the pieces and finding a way to guide our writers to highlighting the major themes that they were exploring and how, it, how this quick turnaround influenced you as the dramaturg. 
Because it was a quick yeah, well, turnaround, people. As, as a reading the scripts, what moved me the most was how the playwrights were able to find heroines and people, you know, that were in like your usual day or, you know, these are commoners, but in their actions, they are heroines. So that was something that I really love of all the plays that I read. Um, and honestly, I feel like the playwrights already had very strong plays coming in. So I, in collaborating with them, I was just trying to put out new questions to get him thinking about the play in new ways and just setting up questions that maybe they wanted to explore or maybe um, think about as they went in through rehearsals. Um, so yeah, I'm just having conversations and trying to spark new ideas. Wonderful. And I like how you underline the fact that these were regular women. You yes. know, whenever you think of a, of a Shiro or a heroine, everybody thinks someone wearing a cape or someone that's got the focal, you know, the, the focus of the world. Everyday people are doing heroic things on a daily basis. And those stories are significant to me because, hey, we need to be inspired to believe that we are amazing within ourselves and that we don't have to look outside of ourselves for hope and amazing inspiration, that we are our own inspiration. Um, yeah. Wow. I have something for Suyuno, who was a director and an actor in this uh, yeah. of performances. What um, what would you have to say about your experience? Because in, in, a, in a sense, what you did there is very heroic. Oh, with this show? Um... So, okay, so, so yes, I acted, let me get it straight for myself. I acted in Denial in Okinawa and then directed um, <laughs> The Inheritance. Yeah, I mean, it was, they were both really different experiences. Luckily, The Inheritance, we got to be on Zoom for because it was written to be on Zoom. And then being able to be in the studio here with Sean as an actor was really fun. Um, and I felt like it was just really fun being able to play in both roles. Um, they haven't done very much directing before so it was fun to direct the inheritance and just really go through this process of discovering the characters along with the actors who did a wonderful job um, and then also like mirror that process as an actor of like discovering what this character is and continuing to play and um, you know experiment every time we did it it was a lot of fun Dubs, well done. Yeah, when uh, Suyuno was already directing and I said, oh, maybe she could do this. And Harry said, oh, she's already doing a thing. Meh, she can handle it too. <laughs> <laughs> and Mijan, thank you so much for coming on board as a composer for Conch Shell Productions. And, you know, talk about a quick turnaround. You're a musician and musicians usually take a moment. And I was like, oh, I need music. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And coming up with scores for like four different plays out of like, just from the script. You wanna share your, your experiences, any, whether it was challenges or wonderful realizations? Um, well, um, you know, I, I, I usually make Jamaican dancehall music and I make a lot of hip hop music that's like hardcore driving kind of gangster, like, you know, <laughs> and, um, when I read the scripts, I was just, well, when I heard about the theme, I was just like, okay, I need to tap into like my feminine side and just try to find like softer sounds. And then I thought to myself, but you know, um, feminism or femininity or like sheroes or like heroines are not, are not always soft, you know what I mean? So I, I just had to try to find a balance, yeah. you know? Not too soft, but not too, you know what I mean? But I had fun um, now that I'm seeing the plays. I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to next week. I might, you know, it was, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Fantastic. Thanks for having Fantastic. me. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for taking part in our artist chat. We haven't got any questions from the audience. And so I'm just going to say that they're just loving it and they're chilling like villains or willing. And we're just gonna move this forward with a closing remark, right? 
And I think the, the biggest thing that really moves me the most is how awesome this online theater experience is for bringing together people of color who are creating awesome art, right? Because I, I don't have the budget with my company to go to Hawaii to work with Kumukua. And they don't have the budget to come to New York, like who has the two most expensive cities in the entire freaking planet, right? But with this medium, we were able to showcase powerful voices of people of color. And let's all continue it. Let's make it an international like whoosh, drive for us to come together and tell our stories. That these are our stories, right? And um, yeah, and I'm just, I'm just tickled. So next week we're gonna be having four more plays and Donna's gonna share a little bit about what the plays are, who the writers are, to get you all spiced up and ready to click on YouTube on the 31st at 8 p.m. EST to p.m. HST. Go I for love it, how Donna. Tanya just put in the chat that you don't, we don't have the money to go to each other's locations yet. Yes, that's right, Donna. <laughs> Thank yes. you. But for now, it's just like Chi Town, uh, New York, Bronx, Queens. Hot Hawaii, all over Hawaii. We all came together. I'm we had sorry. Minneapolis in here too. She couldn't join us for this, but oh, um, okay, okay. Michelle is in Florida. Are you in Florida, Michael and Ashley? Are you in Florida or New York? I think. Oh, we're, Bijan is in Florida. Bijan is in Florida, and we're you're in. We're originally from Florida, but we're in New Jersey. Oh, you're in New Jersey. So there you go. There you go. And you didn't even have to get on the subway to do the job. So let's do this. This is nice. I think there's something so magical that happens when you give artists a quick turnaround deadline and you just have to move past all of your filters and just get it out. And that's for writers and directors and actors as well. And producers too. I and, mean, come on. And no kidding. <laughs> we we can overthink all, to all next year, but when you have like this much time, he's like, get it done. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Uh, so next week we will be back here on the channels that you're watching now, Kumukuhua and Kant Shell's YouTube and Facebook channels, same time, which is 2 p.m. Hawaii, uh, 7 p.m. Midwest and 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And the shows that we will have for you then are The Bystander, written by L. Trey Wilson, directed by Regina Taylor, and performed by Magali Coleman Christopher. Options by Jeannie Baroga, who's a lifetime member of the Dramatists Guild, that is directed by Jackie Puolani Johnson, and performed by Trina Namijo and Riley Antonio. Moonwalker by Gretchen Suarez Pena, directed by Tony Mervin, performed by Lisa Negron and Mateo Moreno. And See the Light by Michelle De Hoya, directed by Po'ai Lincoln and performed by Julia Lopresti. I'm so excited about all of the work that all of you have done and that we get to share this and that we get to talk about the strength of the femme and the the power that is in there and all of its different forms. And we go everywhere from the demonic to that quiet strength that you may not have never noticed, but you should. And that we all feel in some sense uh, within us and around us. And it's time to recognize. Thank yeah. you so much. I love your beautiful faces. Do I get oh, a closing night. statement too? Oh, yes, Harry. Yes. yes, Harry. You're so quiet and shy. <laughs> I know. Go ahead, Harry. Not, Take it on. Take it on, Harry. I'm not quiet. What is it? <laughs> I just, you know, like at the beginning, right? The the two producers that were there, yeah, they got to name some women, right? That were like inspirational and heroic to them. So I told Donna that I was going to talk about Jane Campbell, yeah, the producer and like person at Honolulu Theater for Use for like ever yeah and she's like nationally known and i was going to talk about i told her i was going to talk about how nani k tras yeah who is my who is my teacher and she's an artist and an activist and fighting for one and then i i told her i was going to do that but I, this is what i was going to do i was going to say that you know this whole experience for all of you for for people working on it for the people watching it would be impossible without these two women who are heroes donna and Magali, yeah. I, I, you know, like if we thank anybody, if, if we're gracious to anybody, it's to the two of them who've moved this forward, who've taken this experimental way 
of like doing performance and brought it to all of you. Yeah. It, it would be impossible without them. Yeah. All of these new voices, all of these new experiences. Yeah. And then I, I, I am in awe of them. And I, and I thank them. Like every time I get like the 900 emails they send me. <laughs> <laughs> We do send a lot. Thank you, Harry. That's, so that's thank it. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Thank you to you amazing, amazing artists. Thank you for all <laughs> that you gave to this evening, to this opening evening. It's life affirming. Yeah. Thank you. And Veronica, our rock star, who's making everything happen. Thank you <laughs> yeah. all so much. I all think with that, we'll take it out. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you.